hello students welcome to engineers academy do hit the subscribe button if you are here for the first time now we are going to solve this problem which says that determine the resultant internal loadings acting on the cross section through point b of the sign post the post is fixed to the ground and a uniform pressure of 7 pound per feet square acts perpendicular to the face of the sign so we are given this sign post which is fixed to the ground and we are asked to find the internal loadings at the cross section through that point B and uh, we are given that uh, this sign post is subjected to a pressure of 7 pound per feet square perpendicular to its face so since we want to find the internal loadings at the on the cross section through this point B what we will do is that we will pass a cutting section through here and then we will consider the upper part of the sign post so this will be our free body diagram so first of all we have to find the force which must be acting on this sign post so the force will be we can say that the force will be equal to 7 pound per feet square or we can say that we are given the pressure right let me write that we are given that pressure is equal to we know that pressure is equal to force per unit area and the force will be equal to pressure times area so pressure is given 7 pound per feet square and the area of this sign board so the area is you guys can see this is 3 and 2 plus 3 so 3 into 5 so we can say multiply by 3 feet multiply by 5 feet so feet cancels out this is feet square so we left in the units of pounds right so 7 multiply 3 multiply 5 this gives us 105 so force is equal to 105 pounds and remember that this force will act at the center of this rectangular post so if we consider the front diagram of this cut section so that will be the the front weave and here this represent the force this cross represent the tail of the force which is into the screen so that force f of magnitude 100 pound, 105 pound will act at the geometric center of this rectangle rectangular sign post so if this is 5 feet then this length will be 2.5 feet right we can say this is 2.5 feet and similarly from here to here if the height is 3 feet then this will be 1.5 feet and this edge of the board is this edge of the board is at a distance of 6 feet from point B so we can say that this will be 6 feet so the force the distance of the force from that point B along the z-axis this is this is the z-axis you guys can see if you look into this uh, free body diagram from this side then this is our z-axis x-axis is out of the screen and this is our y-axis let me show those axes here as well so this is y and here we have the z-axis as well and out of the screen is the x-axis so along the z-axis the force is at a distance of 7.5 feet 6 feet plus 1.5 so this distance is we can say this distance is 7.5 feet and as you guys can see that um, this rectangular sign board is attached to the pole at a distance of 2 feet so the center line of the post or we can say that the center line of this pole is at a distance of 2 feet from this corner but the force will act at a distance of 2.5 feet so this means that the distance between the axis of the pole and the force where the force is acting is 0.5 feet so this distance is the here we have the force and here we have the pole axis so this distance is 0.5 feet which is shown here the circular area which is exposed is perpendicular to the z-axis right so if it is perpendicular to the z-axis then the normal force uh, on the cross section through b will be in this direction this is nbz and we will have vbx the shear force because um, this will be parallel to the area and this vby will be parallel to the area so we will have two shear forces and one normal force on the cross section and similarly we will have three 
uh, moments, right? This will be MBX. The, this will be the in, internal bending moment. This is MBY. And this will be the moment about the z-axis. But this is the MBZ is not the bending moment. MBX is the bending moment because it will bend this pole. And because this moment is, you guys can see this moment is parallel to the area. So the moment which is parallel to the area always uh, considered to be the bending moment. So this is MBX and, and this is the direction of the moment, the internal bending moment about the x-axis. So if we curl our right hand fingers, then the thumb will point out in this direction. So we can, we represent the direction of the moment like this by, by this arrow and this arrow. Similarly, this uh, this is also the internal bending moment because this will produce the bending moment about the y-axis like this. And again, this moment is uh, parallel to the cross-section. And similarly, this moment is perpendicular to the cross-section, right? We can say this is the cross-section and this is MBZ, MBZ. So what it will do is that it will produce it will produce a torsion. You guys can see that the then that the moment about the z-axis produce a twist in the in the pole. It do not produce bending, right? So this this MBZ we can call that this is the torsion about the z-axis at uh, on the cross section at point B. So these two will count for the bending moment. This will count for the torsion the torsion torsion for the pole, and we have this NBZ. Uh, VBX and VBY. So to find these uh, all internal loadings, we must apply the equilibrium conditions. So if I apply the sum of the forces along the x-axis, that must be equals to zero. So this is our positive x. So in the positive x, we have VBX, the shear force. So VBX and we have the force. This force is perpendicular to this sign post. So and and you guys can see that this x is also perpendicular to this axis because this this uh, rectangular board is parallel to the y z plane so the x axis is perpendicular to this so this means that this 100 pound 105 pound force is in the negative x so we will write minus 105 pound this is equal to 0 from this we can say that v b x the shear force on the cross section through that point b in the x direction is 105 pounds. Similarly, if we apply the sum of the forces in the y, that must be equals to zero. So again, you guys can see we have v b y. This v b y is in the positive y, v b y, and there is no other force in the y direction because this external force is only in the x direction. So this means that v b y is equal to zero. So the shear force in the y direction on the cross section at point B is equal to zero. Similarly, if we apply the sum of the forces in the z, that must be equal to zero. In the z, we have the normal force. So we have NBZ. And there is no other force in the z direction because the force is only acting in the x. So this means that the normal force on the cross section through that point B along the z is also equal to zero. So this means that the resultant uh, shear force on the cross section at point B is equal to, we can say, VBX square plus VBY square. So VBY is equal to zero. This is equal to zero. So we will be left with VBX. Square will cancel out and we will be left with VBX. So the resultant uh, internal shear force on the cross section through point B is 105 pounds and it is in the positive Y. You guys can see we, we have assumed that it is in the positive Y. Similarly to find MBX, MBY and MBZ, we must apply the sum of the moment about point, uh, sum of the moment about the x-axis. This must be equals to zero. Now we have MBX, this is in the, we have assumed that this is in the counterclockwise direction. If we curl our right hand fingers in this direction, so the thumb will point out in the positive X. So we will have plus MBX 
and again this 105 pound force this is parallel to the x-axis so it's not going to produce the moment about the x-axis a force which is parallel to a given axis so that force will not produce the moment about that axis to which it is parallel so this force is parallel to the x-axis it's not going to produce the moment about the x-axis so this means that the bending moment or we can say the internal bending uh, on the cross section at B along the x-axis is zero similarly if we apply the sum of the moment about the y-axis that must be equals to zero now we have this MBY and this is in the positive y so we will write plus m b y and this force this 100 pound force is producing the moment about the y axis in this direction so if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction so the thumb will point out in the negative y so this means that this 100 pound 105 pound force is producing the clockwise moment about the y axis you guys can see like this if we look from this side then this is the clockwise moment and if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction so the thumb will point out in the negative y so we can say that 105 pound force is producing the clockwise moment about the y axis so this is 105 and the perpendicular distance of this 105 pound force from that y axis is this distance which we have discussed here that this is 7.5 feet so from the y axis the moment arm the perpendicular distance of 105 pound force is 7.5 this must be equals to 0 so the internal bending moment uh, along the y-axis is equal to this is 105 multiplied by 7.5 this gives us 787.5 and the units will be so the units of this is in pounds and this is in feet so the unit will the units will be pound feet now as we have discussed that this moment and this moment they are the internal bending moments they will uh, they will sum up and they they will cause the internal bending moments so now since mbx is equal to zero so we can say that the internal bending moment on the cross section through that point b will be equal to or we can say that the magnitude of that will be equal to mbx square plus mby square again mbx is equal to 0 so we will be left with mby square which will be equal to 787.5 pound feet so this is the uh, internal bending moment on the cross section through that point b similarly if we apply the sum of the moment about the z axis that must be equals to 0 now as you guys can see we have this mbz which is again in the counterclockwise direction if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction so the thumb will point out in the positive z so this means that this is counterclockwise so we will write mbz which is the internal torsional uh, force and as you guys can see that this 105 pound force is producing the the moment about the z axis in this direction that is in the negative z so this is this 105 pound force is producing the moment about the z-axis in this direction so if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction so the thumb will point out in the negative z so this means that 105 pound force is producing the clockwise moment so that is negative 105 and the perpendicular distance of this 105 pound force from the z-axis is this distance which is 0 0.5 feet if you guys are not sure that which one will be the perpendicular distance so think for the force think for the direction of the force so the force is along the x we want to find the moment about the z so the perpendicular distance must be along the y-axis so you guys can see the force is along the x-axis want to find the moment about the z-axis so the perpendicular distance must be parallel to the y-axis so you guys can see this is 0 0.5 feet so 105 multiplied by 0 0.5 is the moment produced by that 105 pound force so this is equal to 0 so we can say mbz is equal to 105 into 0 0.5 which will be equal to 105 multiplied by 0 0.5 is 52.5 so this is equal to 52.5 pound feet 
So now this MBZ is the internal torsion. So we can say that this is TB. So the shear force along the x-axis is 105 pounds and the total internal shear force on the cross-section through B is 105 pounds because VBY is equal to zero. There is no normal force on the cross-section at V. So the normal force, uh, the internal normal force on the cross-section is equal to zero. And the total internal bending moment on the cross-section through that point B is 707.5 pound feet. And the resultant torsional force on the cross-section through that point B is 52.5 pound feet. So this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope this will help you in your learning. Do subscribe Engineers Academy for the solution of such more problems from Mechanics of Materials by R.C. Hibler.